Hello, it's Coach Carmen, the Kingdom Health Purpose and Wealth Coach and the founder of Sharing the Bliss. Today is day number 19 of our 30 Days of Health to Wealth video series. And I'm back talking about the health piece and my sister's story. And today I wanted to continue talking about how she, my sister ended up uh, getting addicted to sh home shopping network, to shopping online, um, shopping on television actually, and how, you know, I, I knew it was demonically inclined because of the fact that my sister was very in, much into taking care of her her budget, her bills, and it got to a point that she was buying so much stuff, I mean, stuff was coming in so rapidly that she didn't even have room for the stuff. It was just things, clothes. I mean, she would buy the same dress in like three different colors, and you know, there's so many uh, types of of clothing and, and bags and jewelry and the jewelry was insane the jewelry was just totally insane and it just got to the point where it was sickening me because I knew that she couldn't even she wasn't going anywhere she couldn't even get out of the house to go anywhere to wear the clothes it was not practical did not make any sense and that's why I knew that it was um, it, it was a indication of where her her mind was going as a result of all of this medication. I also knew that she was depressed in in many ways. You know, not being able to drive anymore, having a, her license taken away from her, so she couldn't shop the way she liked to shop. My sister was um, she she was a diva. She loved to dress and look beautiful she was a very beautiful woman and she loved shopping and also to have that taken away from her it was natural for her to lean towards the shopping on um, television but it was totally out of control and that's why a another confirmation for me that this medication was demonic because she, when I would ask her about the ministries and, and who she was listening to and all, she was making excuses that she couldn't get the channels anymore. She, um, there was something going on and, and, and with, with Comcast and all of these excuses why she could not watch her ministries. And she was no longer attending church either. She was not talking to me about the spiritual work that she had been doing before. And it was like her mind would not allow her the discipline to do the spiritual work, but her mind gave her the discipline to shop. She had a difficult time figuring things out uh, that she needed to figure out but when it came to shopping she knew exactly how to place those orders yeah the sad thing is I I saw so clearly the transition from where she was which was not a very good place at all to spiraling down the medical matrix rabbit hole like it was expedient after she stopped going to church and doing the spiritual work and it was just we were having these ongoing argumentative uh, conversations to the point where I just couldn't take it anymore and I and I stopped contacting her so there would be long bouts where I didn't hear from her because I all I could do is just pray and ask God to give her the wisdom to speak to her. And by the time I would speak to her, I could tell things had gotten worse. So we tried more um, rehabs and it was the same situation she was afraid to to stay because of the 
dystonia attacks that were the the ones that she were, was having that were getting worse and worse were directly related to the, the medication. I did I started doing a lot of research and I was just appalled to see all of the contraindications that my sister was living. So the years were going by and things were getting worse. At by this point by this stage, I was doing my uh, workshops and cooking classes, and I had a cooking class. This was in 2000 and 2010, 2010 at um, my health food store, my health food store in Staten Island, Taste Buds. And it was a raw food class. It was my second class, and I wanted her to come. And I so I mentioned it to my nephew and she said she wanted to come. She got there late because my nephew said it took her a long time to get dressed. And I know that she went to the class now, I know, because she wanted to get out and she just wanted to have a normal life. But at the time, for me, it was, she was a drama queen and she would, many times, she would get to the point where she would have these attacks at convenient times for her, for her. And it was like, you know, just her mind using manipulative tactics, as I said before, this medication takes the worst of your personality and amplifies it. So after a while, um, it was to me like the, the woman who cried wolf. I just didn't take it as serious when she would have um, some of the stiffening of the legs and all, especially when they happened when we would ha try to have interventions with her. <laughs> Happened once at a restaurant. Don't ever try to have an in a inter intervention with someone in a public place, right? That was a big mistake. I didn't know at the time. I just wanted to help my sister. And I had a girlfriend who was an alcoholic for many, many years. And she, my, my, my blonde hair sister, <laughs> very close to me and she was said that she would help me to to do this intervention and we decided to do it in jersey and my sister turned the restaurant out okay as soon as we were talking about taking her off the medication and she stiffened up she fell out it was a hot mess don't ever have interventions in a public place <laughs> and i'm glad i can laugh about it now but and I'm making, um, I'm saying something that I can laugh about because this piece of the story is one of the hardest for me to, to talk about. But that day when I had that raw food class, my sister came in and she was, I could tell like my nephew wanted her to be in a wheelchair, but she did not want to, um, come into the pla into the place in a wheelchair. And she was her, you know, drama queen self and diva self and um, interrupting the class, coming in late and, you know, whatever. But what happened was she was trying to sit down and the nerves, her nerves, it just, it would just take over. This is after over a day, decade of being on this freaking medication and she was 10 times worse than she was when she started 10 times worse she was trying to sit in the chair at the um, health food store and she couldn't even sit in the chair she had a dystonic attack and she was on the floor we had to lay her on the floor of the uh, of the store 
and I had to, of course, stop my class, and we were doing what we could to help her to relax and to get her legs to to unstiffen. And this was going on for a while, and and it was just, you know, she, it was it was like she was having an epileptic seizure, but it wasn't an epileptic seizure. And she finally got it together. And then she tried, and we got her up, and we finally got her propped up. She couldn't sit, but she was propped up. And, you know, next thing you know, she was having conversations um, with some of the other people there while I was talking. <laughs> and... And I had an attitude about it. I really felt that she, you know, was just there to take uh, the focus off of what I was doing. And should I have thought that? Probably not. But the thing is, see, I was seeing through my sister and I was seeing the demonic spirits that was warring against her. And those spirits had an issue with me. And that's one of the reasons why we had locked horns so often when we spoke um, because I saw those spirits behind that medication and they did not want to leave my sister. And when I confronted them in the name of Jesus, they rebelled. And they, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The, the word says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of the dark, wicked spirits in heavenly places. It was the demonic spirits warring against my sister. I was not upset necessarily with my sister but I was upset with what was happening to my sister but still in her eyes I was upset with her and that was the last time my sister got to see me do anything like that it was the, the last time I saw my sister in the the best state that she would have been in from there forward Beca because she this was a breaking point she was upset that i saw her come to my class and turn the class out it it, it affected her so much that she went to a rehab and i didn't know about it she didn't tell me big mistake you family members trying to do things on your own, you better let your family know what you're doing. Don't try to play games or try to be a hero or try to, um, you know, just have relationships even that you don't want your family to know about. You better let your family know who you're hanging out with. You better let your family know who your boyfriend is, young woman. Who your girlfriend is young man who you're hanging out with you gotta let them know what you're doing because they can help you if something goes down i couldn't help my sister i couldn't go to that rehab and to see what they were doing to her because i didn't even know she was there and my nephew did not tell me and my brother-in-law did not tell me that they were taking her to this rehab. She stayed. She actually stayed. The one she stayed at was the one that were that was 
highly responsible. I say they were 100% responsible for taking my sister's life. Now, the, all of the doctors through the years were responsible. The ones that were writing those prescriptions were responsible. But ultimately, this place that took her off of the clomazepam so fast that her body could not handle it. They took her off it and then they sent her home. She started feeling really weird. I found out my, my nephew called me and said that she was acting really strange and that they just took her out of rehab. I'm like, what? I was on my way on on to to take care of um, our, our home in Virginia and um, Georgia and and our home in Alabama. So I was already on the road when I got the call and my sister was telling me that she was, um, that she really needed me to be there with her. She, I mean, she was pleading with me. I need you to be there with me. I need you, like Darlene, I'm, I'm gone. Why didn't you tell me before? I'm already halfway across the country. She was starting to feel so bad that she called the ambulance to take her to the hospital. She felt as if her body was splitting apart. She felt like her brain was being pulled apart, that her body was being pulled apart by demons. It's like the demons being pulled out of her body, all of that medication trying to come out so fast that it was ripping her apart. My sister was hospitalized. She actually went into a scrambled brain situation. Her brain started to scramble. She couldn't talk. She did not know who she was. She was totally in a state of confusion. And I'm going to have to finish telling you the story. Uh, but my sister, when I got the call from my brother-in-law that my, my sister was actually in the hospital and they did not know what to do because she her brain was scrambled I just thought I died I just it was just one it was I mean I've I've gone through having something having part of my life ripped out of me several times from losing my my mother when my my you know when I was 14 my brother my father and then having my baby brother, 30, 38, die of a, a lung disease, a rare lung disease. Um, but my sister, I just, it was like, not my sister. All I can do was just pray down heaven. And eventually, and I, I, when I came back, I was at the hospital and I told those doctors, I gave them the what's for. I was not playing with those doctors. I explained to them that she was taken off of clomazepam and all and the other medications too quickly. That was what was wrong with her. They were trying to figure out whether she was having um, um, a stroke whether she was going through um, going through Alzheimer's, all kinds of, of crazy things. They were free. I'm like, hello. They took her off the medication too fast. But I was glad she was in the hospital because at least she, they could monitor her. She finally started to come to herself. But at that point when she came to herself, she was in such a dystonic state she was constantly having these dystonic attacks and they were horrible my sister was very thin at this point 
she was she was she was always like nice and shapely and busty she was like like somebody sucked the air the life out of her sucked the all of the muscles everything was just flattened and she was having these shakes she was stiff and like a board and turn to the side and shake and shake and shake and shake and she her eyes would roll in the back of her head and I would just try to hold her and her feet would sickle like like this just sickle on top of each other and I would try to massage her and relax her and get her to go into a relaxed state I would pray over her and it was like she was possessed it was so horrible to see and then she would finally calm down and then within the next couple of hours she would have it again and this was going on over and over again but I did not want them to give her any more of those drugs I knew this was her time to be set free I didn't know that it was her time to truly be set free and she waited so long that the drugs the it, they were like demons being pulled out of her body and trying to grab onto her to come back in it was literally that way the way i saw it was just exactly that from there she went from one hospital to the next she went to so many different places they were trying to figure out what was wrong with her could not could not understand that it was the medication she was taken off of that was making her that way. Within a few months, my sister did not look like herself. I would bring, I started to stay at her, I stayed at her home and I would stay there for weeks at a time. My husband would pick me up on the weekends and I would come every day and bring her juices and living food to help to heal her but I knew she needed to have uh, to stay at a holistic place where they could really do what needed to be done and to stop eating the food that they were giving her in the hospital but unfortunately she was not able to do that because she was so she was in such a, a bad state that it would have taken a very special place to to keep her and be willing to take the chance with her. Those systonic attacks were like coming fast and furious. They finally put her in a, a rehab hospital hospice and she was we were trying to get physical therapy for her, but she did not want to do anything. I mean, I brought a picture of my sister to the hospital first, and then I brought it to the rehab center, uh, rehab place, um, and care one, because I wanted those doctors to see what my sister looked like, what she, who she really was. This educated, beautiful woman, uh, teacher, the first African American teacher in her, in one of the um, public schools on Staten Island. I mean, this woman, she she was a very special person, and they were treating her like she was. This, this um, crazed uh, person who just, it was just wrong. When they saw her picture, they all were like, this is your sister? This is, this is you, Dolly? Mrs. Smith? And she was she would try to put on a smile and she would say, yes, that's me. Because they couldn't believe it was the same person. 
I would sit there day after day and watch my sister go through these systonic attacks and see them have to change her diaper. No one should have to die the way my sister died. It was so horrible. She would cry out my name every time I left because she was afraid, so scared to be left alone. She was so afraid that she was gonna die. She finally was so determined not to do any rehab that they had to release her and send her home. We had a hospital bed there in her beautiful room. And my sister stayed in the hospital bed for, it was just about two weeks. And she was happy to be home. Her husband got up in the morning to get dressed to prepare to work and he would get um, to prepare to go to work in the Bronx and he got up super early and that morning this December 15 2011 2010 2010 2011 He, he woke her, she woke up while he was getting dressed and told him who was coughing at the time that he should take something for his cough. And he said, okay, yeah, I'll take something for my cough. He was going into the en suite, into the, the bathroom off the right there in the bedroom area and uh, the bedroom suite and he heard a horrible gasp and he went running to her and that was my sister's last breath on her own and my brother my my nephew called me up at three in the morning frantic that they had the paramedics trying to resuscitate my sister. And it just so happens because this is how God works and this is what happens when you're so close to someone. I woke up at three o'clock in the morning. I woke up the exact time that my sister took her last breath. I just woke up. I didn't wake up frantic or anything. I woke up, went into my office and started working and I'm like, why am I up? this early and I got the phone call while I was already up and I had always t you know asked God not to have me hear bad news while I'm in the middle of sleeping so he woke me up my sister woke me up <laughs> her spirit woke me up um, as she passed on and the thing is, she was in limbo for quite a while because she was resuscitated from the time she left her house to the time she was in the hospital in the emergency um, cardiac area seven times. When they rolled my sister into the um, back into the cardiac room after they had put um, a some type of uh, balloon in her chest to help her heart. She looked like she was hit by a truck. Oh, she had this big tape of gauze and tape on her neck that was blood was all on it and congealed. She was so beaten down as they had to keep pounding her chest every time for seven times. So by the time they had a meeting with us, asked us to 
that they brought us into a special room. Me and my last sibling, my sister, my, my middle sister who we picked up um, from the train station and her daughter, my other, my two nieces, and my brother-in-law, and my, and my sister's, my sister's son, and they told us that she really, that they could resuscitate her again, but they really would, it would not, it would be not a good thing. And we just could not imagine them beating up on her again for the eighth time. So we told them that they could just let her go on her own. And they had given, they said they would give her some medication that would um, help to keep her alive. I could not even go into the room that she was in to see my sister at this point. So my middle sister went to see her, and when she went to see her in that room that they had my sister in, my big sister Darlene in, she said that it smelled like, that my sister smelled like medication. That she, she like the medication was oozing out of her pores. And that just, it just really did something to me because I, it, I knew that it was a medication that was the cause of her demise and it was the medication that was trying to keep her alive in an unnatural way and when that medication that they had given her wore off that night I got the call when I was home that my sister went on to be with the Lord my sister did not have to die. It was stress and some anxiety. There's so many options for that. Those horrible drugs that they gave her were not the option. They did not help her. They only made matters 10 times worse. And today they're trying to give you medication, this type of medication for everything from stumping your toe even having some if you if you have um, a, a stroke and they just want to make sure that you are in a relaxed state they're going to try to give you some Paxil some Zoloft don't take it don't take it you have a right to refuse medicine you have a right to do your research before you take medicine. I'm not saying all well, medicine is bad. I'm saying do your research. Educate yourself before you medicate yourself. This is Coach Carmen wishing you a healthy, whole body and soul divinely blessed life. Join the community at sharingthebliss.com. Get your seven-day mini course. I love you, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.